Is this Dr. Stockman's bungalow? Yes, ma'am. The doctor is in his laboratory. Thank you. Last door. Why I'm here. Well, I've been in your exact predicament. But you know what I done? I sprinkled him with Egyptian nights. And when he come to, we was living on 110th overlooking the park. <laughs> of course, I had to pay the rent. I said, please put the stopper back. I'm afraid it's too, um, too potent for me. Well, you ought to try some. It never fails. Any gags in the letter? Oh, I'm sorry, dear old lady. Oh, <laughs> you are. <laughs> You're an adorable idiot. Listen, uh, getting married wouldn't make either one of us happy. Why not? Why not? Because it just wouldn't work. Saying that for the last six years, and I've never believed you. The whole thing is so typically you. There's a war on your board, and what to do? So in your typical Russian manner, you travel ten thousand miles. Well, all right, twelve. You come crashing in here, and you upset my peace of mind just because you want emotion roots. And bingo, I'm it. You know, you wanted to be a shining light in the medical profession once. You studied for twelve long years to get there, and then you threw it away. Just as you throw me overboard when some new idea struck your fancy. You're wrong, Jim. Thank you. I'll stick to my very, very bugs and you can... I can what? Well, you can... Listen, there, there, there must be dozens of men that'd be crazy to marry you. I'm 
I'm not quite sure just what that means. Oh, well, but, well, why don't you go back home to the Central Clinic? You want to do something? Plenty work there, I understand. It's deeper than that, Jack. I want to belong somewhere. I want somebody of my own. Somebody who'll be glad to see my silly face coming through a door just because it's my silly face. You're the only one I ever felt that way about. I, uh, saw Michael last month, Vanilla, stationed there. studied medicine so you could be near him. Why well, you threw away your career because he married someone else. You're too intelligent to start playing games, you know. wedded spouse. I, Jan, take the right, my lawfully wedded spouse. Cleaving unto the end, forsaking all others. Cleaving unto the end, forsaking all others. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. The ring, please. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. I pronounce the man and wife. Not another step. 
Wait a minute, here it is. We're here. Gotcha. 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 Get on the dock. This is different. They've been mutilated. meet them all the way. You ready? I'm ready. I'm not hungry. Funny how unhungry you get. I don't feel like eating. You don't? Hello, funny face. Did I ever tell you how nice you are, right? I mean, how really nice? Every day, twice on Sunday. That's what you used to do to Michael when you headache, remember? No, I don't. Jan, dear, please, don't let's torture ourselves. All right, I'm sorry. Won't happen again, I promise you. This is the most fortunate meeting, lady. I've been having terrible pains lately. Not as terrible as the one you give my neck. Go make camp. All right, all right. Come on, you lugs. Get there. Come on. Come on. What's on the menu tonight? Well, kidney beans and pink beans. Here's a can of Boston baked. Why not mix them all together? Cook up something exciting. Yeah. Like lobster a la Newberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, One, six, three, four. This is Sergeant Mahoney from Bantech. One, six, three, four. Sergeant Mahoney calling. One, six, three, four. This is Sergeant Mahoney. That's the reporting location. One, six, three, four. Captain, we're about 300 miles north of Bataan. It'll take us at least a month to get to Manila Bay. Yes, Captain. South by East, 60 miles. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Captain says, look out for zoot suits. Come on, what did he say? He said, south by east, 60 miles, then we come to a river. 
I know the place. That's north of West Shore. Anything else? Yeah, he says step on it. There might not be any Manila when we get there. so much of a little girl in Manila. Oh, here it comes. You know, I can tell this better myself. First thing he'll tell you, he thinks he don't deserve it. Well, I don't either. The only reason she goes for him is because she saw me first. Play down. I dream of genie with a light brown hair. Gotta see how yellow her hair is. How blue her eyes. The goofy part of the whole thing is, we were raised in the same county in Pennsylvania, about 30 miles apart, and I never even laid eyes on her until we traveled halfway around the world. <laughs> Where did you meet her? In Manila. In them days, we were flying a plane there, until Junior volunteered to be a hero, and we got shot down at a bush last week. There we are. Me. The all-American tech. Solid concrete from the neck. Both ways. I always used to dream about a girl like Hey Dutch. That's what everybody calls her. Hey. How are you? I don't know. Hello, thing. Speedo bites, I guess. Here, give me a hand, somebody. Right. Get him up. You'll be okay in a couple of days. No. You keep traveling. I'll catch up with you. Break up a litter. We'll take him with us. No. Don't stop for me. I'll be all right. We've thrown them off our trail. You can't carry me and make time. Keep pushing ahead. That's an order. I'm in command. I'll take it easy, sir. We'll make camp here tonight. Sure, you wake up in the morning feeling like a tiger. That is, if this guy don't keep you away from me talking about that thing.
gun. The lieutenant decided to stay a while. Hiya, buddy. What's cooking? Where's the dance? The tan was evacuated ten days ago. We're just picking up the leftovers. This is the last boat before the Japs get here. And the leftovers? That says, come on, leftovers. room of the southern exposure. Just a room. <laughs> Smells wonderful in here, doesn't it? Reminds me of it. The Ritz on Saturday night. Well, I'll tell you, Doc, they'll take care of you in there. And we'll go in and report to headquarters. Well, you better go with me. No, no, I'm all right. I'll go to headquarters with the general. Reporting, sir. Mason, sir. <laughs> well, so you got All through, right. eh? <laughs> That's great. Hello. I'm so glad yeah, to see you. Uh, hey, Captain Moore, this is Dr. Stockton. We met the doctor and his wife in the jungle up north. Mrs. Stockton is also a doctor. My wife's a very fine surgeon, Captain. Well, that's fine. We could use a few more surgeons around here. Sorry. Oh, Nick, you? Well, <laughs> oh, you should have seen it. Mrs. Stockman took a bullet out of there. It was that big, the biggest bullet I've ever seen of her. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I won't be able to put you in a the plane. There isn't one left. You'll have to do your shooting from the ground. Are you kidding? More walking? Oh, my dogs. <laughs> ah, you live through it. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> well, I'd see you, Doctor. Show me the bullet. Well, you took a pen knife. Cut it out of it. No idea what a luxury this is. Soap. And a towel. We had showers in the dark on the middle side. Do you suppose there's no water in them? The number four pipe was shelled two months ago. Never mind. I detest showers anyway. They're starting up again. You'll get used to it. It's amazing what you get used to. All the snarls up. Everything's fine. You in there, Doc? Yes, thank you. Come in. Your husband's reporting surgery. He'll be down in a minute. How are you? I'm fine. You look good. You do too. Thank you. Dutch. I might have known you were hey Dutch. But her eyes are not blue, they're green. Uh-oh. -uh. That calls for me. Oh, Pinky. Been no plane this time. You don't have to worry. I'll be seeing you. Take care of each other. Oh, Pinky! Pinky! Nice talk, soldier. Your ears are dirty. My God. Let me take a look at you. You'll do. I'll take the first one. Thanks. You haven't got a lipstick, have you? Sorry, I left it in my other pants. You seen Jack? You could have knocked me over with a 12-inch gun when he walked into surgery. So you married him. I'm glad for both of you. Thank you, Mike. Why did you do it, Mike? Why did you walk out on me? No, don't answer. I'm sorry I asked. That was a long time ago, Royce. Get yourself all dolled up, Tilly Winks. I'm taking you and Dan to the Waldorf for supper. They've given us a free entry. Afraid you cut yourself. 
quit squawking. Why, this is nice. Run out in the open, air cool. You'll be asking for more money next. You know worse than he is about you. Hey, Dutch. You want it in one. You ready, don't you? I'm ready.
You studied with Hertzberg, right? What would you do? Preparation and probe for the fragment. Where would you affect that? The basal jump. Go ahead. You do it. All right. like this? Sometimes it's worse. Well, you're doing fine, right? Have you seen, my, uh, seen Dr. Royce? No, I haven't. situation into non-existence. There isn't any situation. Not anymore. You must be half ostrich. Why don't you come up for air? You still love her? I used to. I remember one evening we spent in the park planning what we'd do when I got the first big appointment. I had 15 bucks. We were going to be married and live on my salary. She said she didn't mind our being poor. Everything was swell. And the very next day, she went out and rented the most expensive offices in town for me. She installed equipment a hospital might have been, just because she had the money to buy anything she wanted. And you made a fool of yourself. Rushed out and married a woman you didn't give two snaps about. You know, Mike, you threw away four lives that night. Yours, hers, mine, and your wife. Did you make Penny happy? No, I'm afraid not. Well, that leaves us just where we were six years ago. Two men in love with the same woman. Pretty near time we settled that situation, hmm? It's all settled. Is it? Yes, it's settled. Now you'd better get some stuff.
What? Chocolate? Uh huh. I've been saving it for Pinky. Fame again. We want to rob Pinky. Go on, take some. Go on. Have you ever been in love? I mean, really in love. So much so, your heart just about skips a beat every time you look around and he isn't there. I think I know what you mean. Every time I hear a siren, I think it's an ambulance. Sometimes I think I'm going crazy. You mustn't worry. But when you're that way about a guy, I felt about someone like that once. That wasn't love. There was no security in it. No peace. It hurt too much. I don't care. I don't care how much it hurts. I know what I want. I want to marry Pinky and settle down and raise a family. Pinky's crazy about kids. Pinky's a fine boy. All my life, I've had five sisters, pretty ones. The boys were crazy about them. <laughs> I had to wear braces on my teeth. <laughs> they did all right by you. Pinky wants to wait until we get home to get married, but I'm afraid if he sees my sisters... He won't even look at them. You'd better get some rest. Why don't you sleep yourself? I just got to take a look topside. I'll see you later. Pam, here's your rations. Don't overeat. Ah. Biscuit. Ah. They thought to give you something to dunk them in. Yeah, like carbolic acid, for instance. <laughs> Morning. You know this is mule meat? Yeah. You know, I've been beating the stuffings out of them things for 20 years. They're sure getting even with me now. <laughs> what gives? Rattan pheasants, you know. Huh. Camouflage Japs. <laughs> All right, kid, come on. Hmm. Wake up. I was, I was dreaming about a great, big, juicy hamburger with onions. The relief is coming on. Good. Got a few more hours to live. We don't die from starvation. I don't want to die that way, but from malaria. I want to die fighting. Yeah, if we only had something to shoot. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you something to shoot. Settle down on a nice little farm and raise a lot of cows, chickens, and mules. You didn't have to say that. I'll be seeing you.
good to be in the open air again? Yes. Each other at any rate. Love is blind, you know. I've got to report to headquarters. Soak up all the sun you can. You won't get any when they start their daylight raids. I'll go with you. Wake up, honey. A truck just ran over your legs. Oh. Sleeping out is what it's cracked up to be. Good morning. Good morning. find a tin cup of water and take a bath. Yeah, she looks like... Don't you say it. No. I've got to report to, before they throw me in a guardhouse. If there is a guardhouse, get us all in, will you? All right. See you later. How's about a hot tub bath full of nice soapy water with bubbles? have driven with incredible speed through Burma, and so ends another definite stage of the war, with all the rice, oil, and tin of Burma in Japanese hands. Sugar rationing goes into effect throughout the United States next week. Now, every man, woman, and child in the United States will have to carry ration cards. It is rumored that other commodities, such as rubber and coffee, may soon suffer the same fate as sugar. Indeed, it is not too much to expect that the people of this country will be called upon to give up eating meat one day a week. <laughs> Why, a junior... What could happen to you? This program comes to you from San Francisco, sponsored by the makers of Crispy Kernels. With Crispy Kernels, you start the day off right. They're just plain good. They give you pep. Listen to them pop. A oh, double yeah, no brother. Panel we tried them, and we found out they ain't good for the fight. Oh, but they are. I had them this morning with uh, sugar, cream, and strawberries. Yeah, they're very good like that, but I went for the baked apple. Ah, oh, shut up, you guys! We're reaching a fax. Nation is eagerly awaiting the outcome as a determinant of future policy. The good news coming from the nation last week concerns production. April aircraft production was 75% greater than the month preceding Pearl Harbor. It is expected that the goal set for the year of 60,000 airplanes will be reached. Ever yeah, send us Yes! Send us three! Send us two! Send us one! Hey, 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 take it easy. 29 corporations omitted their common... You want your congressman to hear you? You make him unhappy too. The news comes impartially. Well, we may as well face the situation, gentlemen. Ordnance? Ammunition running very low, sir. Medical? We're low on everything, sir. Even anesthetics. Water master? Prepare for a new week, sir. Commissary? We're living on emergency rations now, sir. Engineering? Got a little water left, sir. Hardly cut to drink. Well, that's the story, boys. Now, what'll it be? Fight or quit? Serious, I didn't stand by me, boy. I knew I could rely upon you. You see what I see? Yeah, Jeff. Look, I got the jets in place. Something to shoot at. Wait a minute. 
All right, I can't help that. This is emergency. I used to live up there before they drove us underground. Would you like to see the place? Sure, if it's all right for her. Safe enough. Come on, here's a shortcut. Well, this is it. That was the kitchen. 
There's the dining room. And this was the fireplace in the living room. There was a lot they didn't teach us in anatomy. Maybe we weren't ready for it then. I mean like Hay Dutch. And the way she loved Pinky. Love? You mean the way she loves Pinky, don't you? You're tired, Royce. Try not to think about it. That's right. Try not to think about it. Business as usual. When are you two fools going to come to your senses? Jan, dear, please. I'm beginning to feel like a ghost myself. Here we are in a living room which doesn't exist, talking about a girl who's and something that happened a long time ago. And instead of being thankful that deep down inside there's something solid like this rock we're standing on, you're still running away, burying yourselves underground. Do you know that the first basic fundamental truth that enlightened human beings was received on a rock like this, Mount Sinai? And to prove that truth, it was spread it to the furthest corners of the earth, you know what happened at Gethsemane. And there's a rock, too. And now all of us here, we're standing for truth. In its broadest sense, there isn't time for anything else. Still the analyst, eh, Jan? Analyzing us right through the gates of eternity. That's what we're facing, you know, any moment now. And why do you think I feel we're so important? Because we're dying for something we believe in. Call it democracy. Well, that's what it is. The individual's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That means yours. And yours. And mine. Well, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's all right. Never mind. I'm getting off my soapbox right now. So long. I'll talk to him tomorrow, Russ. Jan, please wait for me. Jan. Jan. I didn't mean to upset you, darling. I wasn't upset. I, I just wanted to be with you. Would you mind kissing me? I'd love it. Honey, you look after Michael, won't you? What do you mean, look after Michael? He doesn't need looking after me. Oh, yes, he does, very much. And you'll stop being afraid? You'll be honest with yourself? I am honest. Hey. You're so doggone sweet. Here's that kiss I promised you. You will be careful. Be
I can make you. I'm not thinking of you now, Grace. Nor of me. What about Jack? What would he want? He just left. He want me to be safe. Then we'll see that you are safe. Get ready.
from Manila to arrange a meeting with the Japs. Everyone here is bawling like a baby. We've got about 55 minutes before surrender. I'm sick of my stomach. Men of the blood red rock, Corregidor, the rock, the living rock for which you died, freedom, still stands enthroned above the war. No treacherous foe can scale that mountainside. Your dying hands rebuilt above the world, a fortress for the unconquerable mind. A mountain with a sky of stars unfurled above it and the hope for all mankind. Men of the rock, far over sea and land, your thunder-cloven crests once more grow bright. America, the torch in her right hand, re-crowned with fire, is moving through the night. America, by land and sea and air, moves to her dead. Let all her foes beware. Yeah. 